Bonjour, and welcome to the last assembly video of the Eagle Boosty. Man, I am excited, and I'm equally crapping my pants because, you know, I'm just, mm, the first start, that first start, oh, it's just like, did I do things right? Is everything going to work? Am I just going to piss away, you know, $6,000 worth of parts? Find out on the next episode of <laughs> my ass. <clears throat> Sorry, that was a little unnecessary, but <laughs> kind of pretty accurate in how I feel. Anywho, in this video, we're going to finish up assembly. And as you can see, it looks a lot different than you may last remember. That's because I've been busy behind the scenes getting some of the odds and ends stuff done. So I have all the pulleys on, except this one because I'm missing a bolt. It's somewhere in here. I'm guessing it fell back there somewhere, but whatever. Uh, so working on that, the crank pulley is on and torqued. This stuff's on and torqued. Alternator's on and torqued. Head temperature sensor there in place. High pressure fuel pumps on, vacuum pump, uh, blah, 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 this thingy, breather oil separator, knock sensors are on. I uh, still have to obviously, oh, in the oil filter housing, I still obviously have to put the uh, fuel rail on, the fuel lines, the turbo, the cooling lines, all the coolant lines to the turbo and all the other stuff up here in the wiring harness, which is what's left. And that's what we're gonna work on in this video. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? There we go. So the turbo is almost on, so like all these are torqued down. I just got the return uh, line on and I'm putting the feed line on, but first I have to put this in. Uh, the little strainer piece that goes in uh, the hole there for the feed line. I thought I could get away with reusing the one I had, uh, but, oh, come on. Evidently, you don't do that, the manual says to put a new one in. So that's what we're doing. Get in there. All right, cool. Then we'll go ahead and put her uh, feed line on there. There we go. Progress. Got all the lines pretty much hooked up to the turbo. The only thing left to go on the turbo is uh, the, no, what do you call it? That thing that goes here and controls all the boost and good old stuff but i think i'm actually going to wait to put that on when the engine's in the car um because it's a lot of really fragile plastic lines that i don't want to you know break so i'll put that on when that's ready to go in the car so but everything else all the like oil and coolant lines are hooked up now i did buy more of this stuff more of this dei heat shielding that i'm going to put on this line here and make sure I have another one that goes on here that I had on here before because that really helped, especially these going over the coolant. I noticed that it helped a lot with uh, coolant temperature because this heats up a lot of things. I mean, it just sits here and cooks these coolant lines. Like it already comes with some stuff from the factory, like some silicone connectors, but it only covers a certain portion, not all of it. So this is getting the works when it comes to heat shielding. And I would love to do something on this, but whatever um yeah otherwise we're all pretty much good on this side of the engine so now we have to basically get the fuel rail prepped to put the injectors in so that's what we're gonna do right now so we got our fuel rail here and uh all of our injectors that have already been cleaned and the best of my ability i was gonna have these uh professionally clean and flow tested but I just did not have the time. I don't think these were ever a problem. So yeah, uh, so whatever. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of oil on the rings here. A little seal down here as well. And then we'll start popping these bad boys in. If I just paid attention, I'd realize that they go this way. There we go. There's a little tab that they lock into. And then, then you put this around it, I think pretty bad that I forget how this goes. Oh, I see, they're springs. So when you, that's why, cause these have a weird torque setting and I guess that's why, cause when you torque these down, 
it pushes these down and keeps resistance or keeps, you know, pressure on the injector. That makes sense. Okay, I see why that's like that. Moving on, you live and learn. I've learned a lot with this project, believe it or not. I learned a whole lot. Two more to do real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rail in. Easy does it. So I have to do one step of 89 inch pounds. Now I have to loosen everything and then go to 177 inch pounds? Oh, 124 inch pounds. And then an additional 30 degrees after that. So let's go ahead to 124. That's that one. Now I gotta do an additional 30 degrees. And there we go. Fuel rail's on. Now I'm gonna put on, I gotta figure out which way it goes. So that pretty much takes care of the fuel lines and all that. I'm gonna put the feed line on after the engine's in the car. Uh, because, you know, it's just, I find it easier that way, you know, because it ain't all hanging around here, whatnot, because it just goes and then into, it just clicks, clicks, two quick connectors and all gravy. Wiring harness time? Wiring harness time. Oh, fun, fun. Off camera, I went around and sprayed every contact that I could find with uh, contact cleaner. And yeah, so that should be good. Just trying to remember how this went. It went something like this. There we go. It's starting to come back to me, <laughs> I, I guess. Not as bad as I was, uh, not as bad as I was expecting. Da, 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 da. And it is, it's not done, but it's ready. Okay, it's not even ready to go in the car yet. It is almost ready to go in the car. I. It is pretty much fully assembled, ready to rock. The harness is on, everything is ready to go. Of course, there's like a few connectors that aren't plugged in yet because like some of this stuff goes to sensors on the intake manifold, all that stuff's going on after the engine's in the car. And because it just makes life easier. Like I took off the coolant tube here because I makes life easier. Because I usually, what I'm gonna do, it's how I picked the engine out of the car. I'm gonna do the same method to get it back in. Is I'm going to run a strap down, you know, through here. And it's just easier when that's not there. So I pick a strap up here. I'm gonna run another one up here so it's even load when I pick it up and put it in. But yeah, we're ready to go. But before this is ready to go, like fully ready to go back in the car, a couple more things need done, which will finish up this video. So in order to do that, I gotta get the engine on the crane. So let's go ahead, get this baby put on the hoist here and we'll go ahead and finish it up. Now the fun part, the last fun part. That's not true, there's a lot more fun to come. This is an important part. Just gotta make sure everything back here is nice and clean. This is my last opportunity to do so. And let's get our new seal here. And instructions and... You know, I just spent a few extra minutes here just trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna execute this because see how these are? This inner brown piece here, I just, I actually just spent time massaging this outwards like that, but it's it's flat when you first get it. And this is the part that needs to got the seal up against, I don't know what the hell it's called back here. It needs to seal up against it like that. And if you can hear, the friction, that's what's sealing that, right? You need a special tool that basically pops in the place, you know, fits inside here and keeps this piece pushed out and it gives you something to hold while you place it on. The problem is those tools can be expensive 
And, you know, there are some other options like the uh, engineered motorsports seal installation tool, which is a 3D printed piece that I did buy. Unfortunately, somewhere along the way, just like a lot of parts I've ordered on this whole project, between them taking my money and sometime now, and there was a problem because it's been a week and I have yet to uh, receive that tool. And unfortunately, I can't wait for them to decide that they're gonna send me it or not. <laughs> so I've uh, developed a strategy to do this myself, my way. Uh, receive that tool. So just to be clear, I actually did receive the tool I ordered from EMS. The problem is I didn't even know they sent it out. They never sent me anything about it being shipped and I didn't have any tracking information. So I didn't even know it was coming that day. It did come later this day that I did the video, which sucks because had I known it was coming this day, I would have waited so I could have used it because it did cost me, you know, 40 some dollars shipped and that sucks because I never did use it. So EMS guys, if you're watching this, please provide tracking information for your orders. It would be so helpful. Remember, there's always three ways of doing things, the right way, the wrong way, and then there's the way that just works. And that's what we're choosing to do today. The way that works. I don't care how it gets done as long as it gets done. All right, got my silicone on there. So it is a slight race against time to make sure that it doesn't, you know, dry before you do things. So let's go ahead. Just gotta be very careful. Look at that like a glove installation tool my ass don't need a dang installation tool you just need some common sense that's what you need it's all right it's all right well i may have skipped over a couple steps but as you can see crankshaft seals on and the flex plates on mind you if you ever want to know what the weight of this was three pounds seven ounces the more you know oh man so now this is ready to go back where it belongs. So of course that will be the next video. But I think this finally wraps it up for the assembly of the EcoBoost. And it definitely wraps up here for this video. So as always, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share with everyone you know if you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep looking out for next Cars Creative video.